but she has to have that 14th missing part in order for it to work. Kind of get that, okay? So anyway, so the sons of God took the daughters of men and they made wives out of them. In verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his day shall be in 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. Now I want to stop right here. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, he's talking about the flood. Also after the flood. Now remember, Isis and Osiris were together. He was murdered. And then you have the flood. After the flood... The, she resurrects them. They come back together again and produce a child. So, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men of old, which were of old, men of renown. And so in every civilization, in every culture on the earth, you have the story of the gods and the women coming together and forming these hybrids, the giants, the titans, the, the immortals, as it were. Okay, that movie just came out here a while back. And so now we have, we skip forward after the flood, and we have a character by the name of Nimrod. Now I think Nimrod probably corresponds with Osiris. There is some, and I don't know if I believe this or not, but there is some of the mythology that actually says that Nimrod was a giant. We know, that according to the Bible, that Nimrod was the first king over all the earth. Nimrod, Nimrod set up the original world order. Genesis chapter 10, verse 8, the Bible says, Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter. Now, if we were to compare, stop right, if we were to compare Genesis chapter 10 with Genesis chapter 6, we know that the hybrids, the giants, according to Genesis chapter 6, were mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Here in Genesis chapter 10, it might be that the Bible is alluding to the fact that Nimrod was one of those mighty men of old, a man of renown. He began to be a mighty one in the earth, and he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. I like that phrase, before the Lord, because God said, you shall have no other gods before me. Nimrod was taking the place of God here on the earth. Even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, Kalna, in the land of Shinar. So we have Nimrod, who might very well have been one of these hybrids. He was definitely a king. He built the first world order after the flood. He built these four cities. One of them was the kingdom of Babel, or the kingdom of Babylon. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 11. We're going to start piecing this together. I hope you're following with me so far. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. Now, I may not necessarily understand and believe all the myths that uh, Manly Hall talks about, that Albert Pike talks about. One thing I definitely believe is what's in this Bible right here. So, Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. The whole earth was of one language, and one speech. Now, I want to show you this. The whole earth. You see, I, I kind of believe, you know, I looked at a globe one time and I had a school teacher point this out to me one time. That South America just seems to fit in to Africa if you were like slide them together. And I'm going, wow, it, it does look like they were, they were fitted together. Let's take that concept, the evolutionists and the geologists, they call it Pangea, this idea of Pangea, that at one time, all of the, the scattered land masses of the world were actually fitted together at one time. Let's, let's see if we can find that in the scriptures. We go back to Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, and notice that the Bible says, the whole earth, the whole earth, the earth, if you go back to Genesis 1, you'll see that God called the dry land earth and the waters he called the sea. So the word earth refers to the dry land and according to Genesis chapter 11, it looks like that it was whole, that it was together. Now I'll give you a little bit more biblical evidence to show you this here in just a little bit. But let's go back to the story of Babel. Genesis chapter 11, verse 3. Let's see what happened. They said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And I, I want you to notice that I've underlined the, the words that the people of the world said. Now, I want you to think of what the devil said to Eve. And we have 46 words. Now I want you to think of what the people of the earth are now saying. 
They said one to another, let, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name lest we be, and I want you to notice this, scattered abroad upon the face of of the whole earth. Are you, are you following with me here? I want you to think of the similarity here between what they are wanting in Babel, what Nimrod wants, what the world, the whole earth wants. They don't want to be scattered. They don't want to be broken up. I'll show you why they don't want that here in a little bit. But I want you to, I want you to get this. Here's what the Bible, I believe, is telling us. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. That number one, that at one time on the earth there was a single landmass. A lot of geologists think that there was. I think according to the scripture there was. We know that number two, there was a single language. Now, the Bible says that there was a single language. I was actually looking at a college textbook on etymology one time, and I couldn't believe my eyes. The person who wrote this textbook said that most etymologists agree that somewhere around 5,000 years ago, there was a common language in the earth. And I went... That is exactly, not only exactly what the Bible says, but it's exactly the time frame that the Bible gives it. Somewhere around 5,000 years ago, a common language. So we know that there was one landmass. We know that there was a common language. We know that the, the peoples of the world were gathered together in these four cities, which was this single one world kingdom over all the earth. It was in the land of Shinar, or it's called Sumeria now. You might have seen uh, some of the works of Zechariah Sitchin and others who talk about ancient Sumeria. I think they put way too much stock in these Sumerian writings. The Sumerian writings actually mirror the perfection that you see in the scriptures. Um, and so there would have been, we have all the people gathered together, we have one landmass, we have one kingdom, everybody's speaking the same language. So you would have had one single mystery religion that survived after the flood. The mystery religion of the sons of the, sons of the gods, and, or excuse me, the sons of God and the daughters of men coming together to make these hybrids and these, these giants probably had advanced knowledge, advanced te technology. Think of the story of Atlantis. Atlantis was this, this great civilization, and all of a sudden it sank under a flood. The story of Atlantis can be seen clearly in the story of Noah's flood in the scriptures. And the idea is that Atlantis is going to rise again from the depths one of these days. I want you to think about that. So anyway, um, single mystery religion revived after the flood. We know that the giants were produced once again after the flood. And so now we have the effort in Babel. I want you to get this. We have, we have men who are of low estate. God said he made them lower than the angels. And the, and the devil promised Eve in the Garden of Eden that they would be elevated to godhood. So we have this mystery religion in Babel that exists. They're trying to build a city and a tower and a name for mankind. A single name for mankind. A name. And a tower that will rise up to put man or elevate man from his low estate to a higher realm. It's always been the goal of mankind all throughout history to be able to rise up some way, somehow, to a higher elevation. And that's what the Tower of Babel was. It was actually a religious idea, a religious idea of elevating low man to that of Godhood. Now, God sees this in Genesis chapter 11. And I want you to pay close attention to what God did. We're going to focus on this, and this is going to be uh, sort of the focus of what we're talking about. Genesis chapter 11, verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. There's that number there. And they have all one language. And this they began to do. They started it. They didn't finish it. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So God says in Genesis 11, verse 7, Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord, look at the word here, scattered. Now stop right here. Think about what happened to the body of Osiris. Once he was resurrected after the flood, what happened? He was cut in pieces, and those pieces were 
scattered. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all of all the earth, which is the dry ground, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. And, and I want to stop right here. I like this because some words just make sense, okay? Because when a little baby goes, if we were to put that in word, it would be Babel. See how simple that is? Uh, therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So now, I want you to watch this. Okay, remember, remember uh, Typhon or Set, who uh, represented that which cut the body of Osiris, along with his 72 conspirators, cutting the body and scattering it all over the earth. We go back to Genesis chapter 10, because I want you to see what God's doing here. Here we have everybody of the earth gathered together. They are one people. They're in one kingdom. They speak one language. They have one mystery religion, and they have one goal, and that is we're going to be gods. Okay, that's their goal. God is going to scatter them. Notice in Genesis chapter 10, verse 32. Genesis chapter 10 actually enumerates and gives by name all of the families that came out of Shem, Ham, and Japheth after the flood. It mentions all of them by name. I counted all of those names and all of those lineages in Genesis chapter 10. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations and their nations. And by these were the nations, look at the word, divided in the earth after the flood. You, you know how many nations there were? You know how many is enumerated in Genesis chapter 10? Exactly 72. So the myth can be found right here in the truth of the scripture. So I want you to think, the 72 different nations, the, the, the different types of people, the races as it were, uh, there are three major races on the earth. There's Mongoloid, Negroid, and Caucasoid. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You have sub-races, which are mixtures of those three races together, and you have them listed in Genesis chapter 10, and that number is 72, and God took those peoples and he divided them by race. Then, in Genesis chapter 10, verse 25, notice this. This is, uh, uh, the Bible mentions a fellow by the name of Peleg. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg. For in his days was the earth. Remember what the earth means. According to Genesis 1, it is the dry land. For in his days was the earth, the dry land, divided and his brother's name was Joktan. So I want you to I want you to get this picture here. You you remember Pangaea, all of the all of the land masses, all of the earth, the is whole. It's together. It's one. So here's what God did. God took. I want you to get this picture here. Okay. God took um, after after Babel when they're starting to build. You have everybody together after, after when God came down, and He confused them. He decided to scatter and break in pieces and cut asunder and separate all of the peoples of the earth. And here's how he did it. Number one, he did it by language. All of a sudden, these two people working together. Hey, hand me that brick there. And all of a sudden, this guy here is going, Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Or something like that. And all of a sudden now, they can't understand one another. God scattered them by their languages. So you can imagine what's going on here. Now they figure out that they can't speak all the same language. So they start moving away from another. And people are joining together in groups who do what? They speak the same language. Okay?